Hey everyone, it's Fox from Modelmaking.guru here, back with part two of our build of the Master Grade Freedom Gundam. Um, last video we just showed you what's in the box, the build has actually started now. Uh, I'm going to do this from the point of view that you've never built a Gumpler before, so I'm going to cover everything. A lot of you may have, or will have already built one, so this is all teaching an old dog new tricks, or in some cases very talented young dogs new tricks. Um, the way I'm going to do this is by no means the only way to do this, I'm just trying this method out. All the methods I'm going to use are me trying these out. It's only my third Gumpler, and it's only the second one I've fully painted. So, don't have to do these things the way I'm going to do them, but we'll see how this goes. It might save you having to figure it out. The one thing about building Gumpler and painting them is that you do have to think about a lot of things and try and plan how you're going to do stuff. So, it gets a bit of a nightmare. So, what have we done so far? Enough waffle. Um, I have taken everything off the sprues, uh, and as you can see, we have many, many parts, and not just those, but those as well. Uh, I decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to prime and paint everything, so I took all the parts off the sprues, uh, rather than, some people paint them on the sprues, but I thought I'll take them off. Uh, we've got all the different parts organised into body parts, and this follows the instructions. Uh, Gunplay instructions tend to be, uh, with master grade, it tends to be build the body, or the torso, then you build the head, then you do the left arm, then the right arm, then the left leg, then the right leg, then the waist, then the backpack. It kind of follows a strict pattern. So I've divided everything up into, you know, here's the, all the parts of the torso. Here's the left arm, the right arm, uh, hip gun left and right. You've got the left leg, the right leg, uh, the waist, uh, shoulders. I've got all the feet in here. Um, the feet are only in one box because both feet are identical. There's no left and right with the feet. And in the second box, I have all the parts for the um, guns on the wings, more wings, uh, the shield, the beam rifle and the backpack. Um, I found these little trays really handy. I just got these for a few quid from Staples, but you can get them from pound stores, little organising trays. Um, this one's quite good because it's good for long pieces like the wings, which are too long to go in this one. Um, so yeah, some sort of organisation box is great. The first time I did a gumpla, I had bowls, kitchen, you know, normal eating food bowls, and that just filled my desk up, so it was pain in the bum. What have we done so far? We've got all the pieces off the sprue, uh, off the trees, if you prefer. Uh, I'll show you how to remove parts from the sprue. First thing we need to do after getting all these into the relevant piles is go through every single piece and take off all the little nubs uh, or gate marks. There's different words for them, basically little bits of sprue that are left on the piece. Bandai are very good at undergating a lot of things, putting the, the, the gate under the piece so it, you don't have a lot to carve off, but sometimes you do. Um, once they're all, I've spent a couple of days going through all these, taking all the bits of, bits of sprue off, it's really tedious. This is the part at which most people when they build their first Gumpler, uh, people who give up on Gumpler and don't even finish the first one, this is usually the bit that does it. because this is very, very tedious. Till you get to the actual building part, it's actually kind of tedious build. Uh, so a lot of people will just give up and say, I can't be doing with this. I've spent a good eight or nine hours getting all the parts off the sprue and trimming them. So don't give up. It's more than worth sticking with it. Um, don't give up at all. Um, so got them all out. I'm trimming all the parts off. I'll show you in a minute how to trim all the parts off. Once that's done, it's a case of priming them and uh, starting with the painting. Um, now I am waiting for a, a shed load of little alligator clips to, so I can make some little skewers to hold parts while I paint them. So until that turns up, I can't do any priming or painting. Uh, but I shall show you now how to take things off sprues. Um, Gumpler kits kind of demand a different way of working to your traditional build it and paint it kit. Um, there's two ways. You don't actually have to paint these things. You can just build them and they're pre-coloured, stick a matte coat on it, and it looks fine. Um, but I'm going to paint this fully. So I'll assume you're going to paint along, um, but I'll show you how to denub a part if you're not going to paint it. After we've done that, everything else you probably wouldn't need to know because it's painting and priming. But I would suggest painting it. If, you, if you've got the kit, it's worth painting them. So let me stop waffling. I'll put these to one side, and I'll show you how to take things off the sprue and how to trim the parts. So... Give me a moment to set up, and we'll do that. Okie dokie, right, let's get parts off sprues and clean. Um, right, what I shall do, because I've taken all the parts off the sprues, I'll take this 
stand piece off to show you. Uh, I'm super zoomed in now. Um, any model kit, all the parts are attached to the tree. This is the tree, um, or the sprue. And you get these, some people call them gates, I just call it another bit of sprue. Uh, you get gates that attach the part itself here to the sprue. Um, for doing all this cleanup, you only really need a small number of tools. You need a pair of uh, snips, you need a sharp craft knife or modelling knife. Make sure it's a sharp, clean blade, otherwise, it just becomes a pain in the bum. And then you need something to file with, and you can either use metal files, although I tend to not use these, uh, nothing wrong with those at all, or you can use sanding sticks of various grades. Enormous sanding stick. Whoa! Sorry. Uh, or you can use sandpaper, whichever you prefer. I prefer sanding sticks. So first thing to do is cutting them off the sprue. Now, if you're used to making normal plastic models, you tend to cut these things off with a modeling knife. You get the knife and cut it off the sprue, you sand it down, and then you're good to go. It's a little bit different with gumpler kits because a lot of people make these without painting them. So it gets a little weird. But these are good techniques to use. Uh, whether you're painting them or not. So, with your snips, nice sharp snips, uh, the trick is first of all, when you cut them off the sprue, don't cut it right against the part, because you'll end up possibly deforming the plastic of the part, and that's what you don't want. Cut it away from the part. Now, I'm having to look at a screen while doing this, it's a bit weird. So cut it away from the part. I'll do the other ones. Diddy. That one there. I had to choose the biggest part with like a million different attachment points, didn't I, to do this. Do that one. Do there. So I'm leaving a big part of the uh, the gate, big piece of gate on there. And you can cut it close, but you're just making it harder for yourself in the long run if you do. Okay, so you have your, your part now with its pieces of uh, gate sticking on. And what you do next is get your snips again, I hope you can see this, and you cut close to the plastic, not right against the plastic, you still want to leave a little tiny bit just sticking up, and I know I've got black gloves and it's a black part and I didn't plan this really well, let me try a different angle, let's try, let's try there, can we see that? So I don't want to cut right down to the plastic here, because again it, it deforms the plastic and you risk either cutting a little notch into the plastic or just stretching it and bending it. So just leave a little bit of sprue sticking out, a little bit of nub, and snip that off. Usually that will ping across your floor and disappear into the carpet and you won't find it for about two weeks until you find it with your foot. It's not quite as bad as standing on a Lego. So, so what you're left with, I don't know if you can see this, and see if we can shed some light on this for you. You can see there on the end apart from my enormous finger, a little tiny bit of nub. That's called a nub. A little bit of plastic from the sprue sticking up. And that's quite easy to deal with. So how do we deal with that? Well, I'm going to go to the smaller pieces because they're easier to deal with. Um, so how do we deal with that? Well, kind of easy. With this fella and some sanding. <coughs> now there's two ways you can do this, uh, depending on if you're painting your gumpler or not. Um, if you're painting your gumpler, you don't actually have to be as careful as this, but I'm going to on my kit anyway. What we want to do is remove the nub um, and get it as smooth as possible with no trace of that nub being left. If you're not painting your gumpler, um, then you want to make it like there's never a nub there, because you build this gumpler and it looks a bit rubbish if it's got this little nub sticking out, like you see on this foot. Uh, if I can do the focus thing again. Come on, there we go. See that nub there? Mental note, don't point at the image on the phone screen to try and suggest where something is. We want to get rid of that, because that would look rubbish. Now, sometimes they are on really bad little panel lines, sometimes. You don't get perfection all the time from Bandai. Um, so it's really a case of getting rid of those and hoping that they're not visible. Um, so let's try. I'm going to do it on this white piece, because white's easier to do. Uh, there are different colour plastics, and what you'll learn as you do this is with, with Gumpler kits, if the piece is white, it's an absolute dream. You can carve away and it won't really leave much plastic, you won't see much. 
If it's grey, it'll be a bit of a challenge. If it's light blue, it's not so bad. If it's a dark blue piece, you're in a whole world of pain. Uh, when you're trimming the part on a dark blue piece or anything that's not white, when you cut it, if you put it under stress, you may see it suddenly goes white where you've cut. Now on the dark blue pieces, for some reason, they are the worst ones. You'll just be really careful trimming away and you'll get little bits of white and it's a pain in the bum if you're not painting your gumpler. Um, so yeah, it's not fun. If you're painting it, it doesn't really matter so much. So what do you do with that nub? You see that nub on the end there? Dead easy. All you do is... First of all, I hope it's visible on the screen. Apologies if you can't see any of this. First and foremost, um, get, let me just change the lighting here so you can see a bit better. Uh, it doesn't help that I've got black gloves on. So what we do first of all is take our sharp knife and we want to take it off as much as we can. Now we're not going to just gouge in and take the whole thing out. How are you seeing that? Not just going to gouge into it and take it all out because you'll leave a, a dint in the plastic. What we're going to do is just shave off very gently a little tiny bit off the top. Get your blade flat against the surface and just gently shave. And if you cannot have shaky hands because you've only had one cup of coffee so far today and you're really tired, that helps. Uh, and what you'll find is that will very slowly disappear. Very slowly. You can turn the piece around. Ideally, if, you've, if, you, if you are going to do it, do it away from yourself. I can't actually work this way at all. I tend to slip and mess it up, so I tend to do it towards myself. But what you want is a firm grip on the blade, but you're not using any pressure at all on the piece. So you're really gripping the blade, but just gently. And if it helps to hold it here, be really, really careful. If you're young, if, you, if you're really young, you should get someone else to do this for you. Um, just be really careful. I tend to grip it like this because I'm very careful and know what I'm doing. But having said that, I've got a big cut on my thumb, which doesn't help. So even I make mistakes. You want small movements. If you can rest your finger underneath it to hold the piece steady, that's even better. And you're just gently, I hope you can see all this, just gently shaving. You're not cutting, you're shaving. Uh, try different parts of the blade. The end of the blade is a lot more flexible than the beginning of the blade, uh, the, the hilt of the blade. Okay, so I've got that down. Now it's still there, I can still see it, I can still feel it. So there's another technique you can use. If you've got a little tiny bit left, you can just use the blade flat on the surface. I hope you can see all this. Put the blade flat like this, not angled. Completely 90 degrees to the surface. And just drag it across. Like that. If it's on a chamfered edge, you want to follow the chamfer. Well, I can't quite see, there's a little bit left there, so I'll just try again. This is like a little edge, so I need to work on that. Now as long as this blade is flat, don't worry about scratching the plastic. As long as it's flat to the edge when you're doing this. This is an old technique models use anyway for taking seam lines off things, so Put in the blade 90 degrees like that. If you can see that. My hands are really shaky, sorry. 90 degrees to the blade and up and down. So let's try that again. Uh, where are we? All these white pieces is well throwing the balance out. So you can see now, if I can get it to focus, that nub is almost, but not quite, almost gone. It was a big nub like that one there, but now it's gone. Now you'll see the surface is a bit rough. It's not shining the same as the other parts. That's where the sanding comes in. If you're not painting your gumpler, I mean, if you're painting your gumpler, you could just leave it like that if you want. Let's put the focus back off again. Um, if you're not painting your gumpler, you want to get that look to looking like plastic again. So what you want to do then is use a succession of different files or sandpaper or sanding sticks to get it smooth. Um, I've got here quite, I don't know what grade these are, which is not going to help you at all, but I've got quite a, a reasonably rough one, but not too rough. Uh, a medium, almost medium, and then I've got a polishing cloth, a uh, polishing cloth, polishing stick, and then an even finer polishing. They look a bit battered, but they work. So it's basically coarse, medium, fine, super fine. Specific grits, you don't need to go with a heavy grit on this. 
you're looking at it's almost different types of polishing really so what I will do is that's all scraped up now so I'll just sand that if you've got a flat surface try and keep the the sanding stick flat to it don't push down hard because you'll bend the sanding sponge or the sanding stick and then it will keep a flat surface that's now nice and smooth remember the edges on here as well it's now nice and smooth then I take my finer stick and I simply oh, that one sorry rub it now this will put this will put marring in the surface this one so this one is fine it will take that marring out but replace it with some more marring and then last of all swap that over to the really fine side that one and one last run I don't know if you can hear this let's try it Oops, look, where's the camera I'm not even showing you where's it gone I'm trying to get it so you can hear it uh, there is you hear a little squeaking sound when it's squeaking it means you're almost there now I've only rushed that so it's not perfect but so where's it gone there it is basically I've removed the nub then I've sanded it with progressively finer sanding sticks and it should now look more like the original plastic the goal is if you're not painting it that this sanded part should be as smooth and shiny as the rest of it um, I say I've rushed this a bit so it's not perfect now if you aren't painting it then when you finish you probably want to do a, a matte coat anyway so don't worry if it's not as shiny perfectly you just want to make sure there's no sanding marks in there um, no little trace of the sanding there is quite some trace in there just keep polishing it more and more with finer and finer paper or sticks and you should be fine but that's the goal to get rid of the nubs and remove any trace and that's what you want to do now um, you may find um, with say white pieces you don't need to go quite so high with the polishing if you're not painting you can just do a couple of goes and it's fine because the white's really forgiving anyway if you're doing a dark blue piece uh, you may want to go all through all the different grades because that's tough excuse me oh I do apologize oh those beans have come back on me um, sorry about that could have been worse um, yeah the dark blue plastic not this stuff the darker stuff is really unforgiving um, so you probably have to do a lot of sanding on those to get them smooth but they say sanding them a lot to get them looking like that is fine or even better paint your gumpla because I'm going to be painting this I'm not worrying too much about how smooth and beautiful the shiny the surface is I just need to get it smooth with a little bit of roughness so it can take the primer uh, and that's going to fill in any little sanding marks and micro marring anyway so if you are priming it don't worry about it if it doesn't quite look as shiny that's not a problem it just needs to look like there's no nub ever been there and that's where I'm up to so I'm gonna I've got uh, I don't know, about 10 or 20 pieces left to do this too it's taking about three days so far doing maybe three or four hours a day it is tedious um, it's not fun it's not enjoyable so have something to listen to in the background or a TV program that can be playing in the background have something to distract you while you're doing it, but do pay attention. Take your time with it. If you rush it, if you start clipping the nubs against the plastic to do it faster, you'll just leave little marks. Uh, you'll ruin everything. Um, just take your time, stick with it. There's more tedium to come. This isn't the last of the tedium, but it is worth it. So I'll go and finish off these. And when we come back and my little alligator clips have arrived, uh, we shall do some priming. I probably won't film that bit. But we'll get the parts for maybe the torso or the head or something first primed. And then we'll start with the pre-shading. So, you know what I'm going to say. Back in a moment. Alrighty, well, we've started the priming. Uh, I didn't film it because I did it outside. And I've had to wait a few days because it started to rain, which was great. Because I can't spray when I'm outside and it's raining. Um, so what have we done? Well, what I started doing... I thought about for a few days how exactly to break down the painting uh, because once I've got all the parts primed I'm basically going to have lots and lots of different parts all the same colour as the primer basically they'll all be white so I won't know which are the blue parts which are the red parts so I tried to figure it all out and the best solution I came up with is to go stage by stage by colour so what I've done is I've taken out all the white parts for the, for the main Gundam and the shield primed them uh, now we're going to do some pre-shading and then start applying the paint. 
Um, I've divided them up on these little blocks of foam. I don't know if you can see. So I've got them separate in different parts. So left leg, right leg, uh, shoulder left, shoulder right, head. So I'm going to keep them all in these little separate piles so that I know which bit is which. Uh, and I can put them all back in the relevant little slots in my little tidy box when I finish this part. And hopefully then when I've done all the white bits, pre-shaded them and painted them, I'll put them back in the box, get all the blue bits for each part, keep them all separated out, prime them, paint them, everything else. And by the end of it, I should have all the parts painted and still separated into their own little compartments. So I know which bit is left leg, which bit is a right leg. Uh, some people just get all the parts out and paint them and how they then figure out which part is which especially when some parts can be chiral, so the left and right are slightly different. I don't know how they do that, but my hat's off to them. So we've got everything primed. Uh, as you can see, I've made my little hedgehog. Uh, the other thing I did was when I primed them, uh, like a put, um, I went and bought a load of primer, but unfortunately what I bought was the Tamiya uh, surface primer. Get it in shot, fine surface primer. Uh, unfortunately what I bought was a whole mess of the white stuff, not the grey stuff, so basically I'm spraying white primer onto white plastic um, and I couldn't actually see where the primer was going. Duh, schoolboy error. Uh, but I've got the coverage fine, I've had a look over and there's no shiny bits. Um, ideally if you're going to do this, you probably want to get a colour that's not white, so this is a slightly less fine surface primer, it's a slightly darker grey colour, that might be better. Um, and I will do a separate video about how to prime using a spray can because um, there's a particular way of doing it that ensures you don't get paint runs and thick primer but it, I'd have to do it outside and filming outside is difficult because I can't spray inside because it's horrible horrible stuff so let's get this out of the way uh, what we're going to do first let's find somewhere to put this hang on a second what we're going to do is I'm going to quickly show you how to pre-shade uh, and then we'll get all the parts pre-shaded and then we will start the painting. This is where you start to separate your Gumpla from the the more typical build it, matte coat it, maybe do some panel lining to actually paint your Gumpla and make it look fabtastic. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Do -do -do. Right, so what's the plan? We are going to, we've got the primer on, we're going to do some pre-shading. What do I mean? Now you may already know this, so obviously if you do, you can skip past this bit. What do I mean by pre-shading? What I mean is that the white balance on this camera is going crazy. Um, white balance, uh, white balance. Oh, you can tell it's a thousand degrees in here. Pre-shading is where you will basically um, paint on or spray on some dark shadowy lines to emphasize the panel lines, recessed areas and grooves. The idea being that when you then paint the main color over the top in light misty coats, that pre-shading will sort of show through a little bit and give some natural shadowing. You don't have to do it, uh, but I find it gives a lot more depth to the final paint job. Rather than just being white with some panel lines, it'll be white with some panel lines that you may fill in other ways later, but also some shadowing around those, just to suggest, uh, you know, some depth. Now you can do as much or as little as you want. Um, I'm going to do a reasonable amount because I don't do clean models, as you know, if you follow me. So I'm going to do some weathering on this Gundam. Um, so what we're going to use, we're going to use you can use black if you want, although I find black a little harsh. I'm going to use some Tamiya XF85 Rubber Black because it's a just off black black. It's like a very dark grey and it's kind of a neutral, more of a brown tone than a blue tone. Uh, we're going to need some thinner. It's an acrylic paint, so I'm using an acrylic thinner. In this case, Tamiya's X28, the good old standby. Um, so, um, Tamiya paints typically, uh, normally you're going to use about a 50-50 mix of paint and thinner. Um, your mileage may vary. If you're using metallic paints, you probably want a lot more thinner than paint because metallic paints have got metallic flecks in them uh, and they can gunk up your airbrush if it's a small aperture. So you might want to use less paint and more thinner. So I'm going to fill, you can't see this, but I'm putting maybe two thirds of the cup in as thinner. And then we will add, now I could use a pipette for putting the paint in, but I'm lazy and I don't use all my pipettes. A few drops of paint. Again, I'm not doing this to actually paint the model, I'm doing it just to give a pre-shade, so it doesn't have to be super thick. I'm not worried about getting fantastic coverage. Uh, okay, so let me turn on the uh, compressor and the spray booth. I do actually have my spray booth on, just for a bit of extraction. So I hope you can still hear me. 
Right, what we're going to do is, what I'm not going to do is blast the paint on full strength like that. Don't want to do that. On most airbrushes, if it's a good one, there's a flow nozzle on the back. I'm going to turn it all the way to the right. That restricts how far the trigger can come back. And then do it a little bit to the left. Because I really don't want much paint at all. Apart from the paint I've just spilled. Brilliant. Hello. Let's just rub that off. Yeah, try not to wave your airbrush around either. So what you'll see now is, hopefully, if I can get it in shot, the line is much finer. It takes longer to build up. I really want almost no paint at all. And quite simply, what we're going to do <coughs> is we're going to take our <coughs> fine spray and we're going to apply it to all the relevant panel lines. I'll show you. It's easy to do it and tell you, so let's go. Now, when you're doing airbrushing, don't start on the model piece because you'll get a little blap of air for through first um, and that will splurge out some extra paint. So do it away from. So pull the air, push down for the air then pull back for the paint. So always start with the air first. So let's go. I'll just do it and you'll see what I mean. If you can see this. We do it around the edges as well. It looks a lot darker on film, by the way. It's not as dark as it looks on film. And we give some definition to the edges. Let's see if you can see this, hopefully. I've got to do it in a way that you can see it, but that also I can paint it, so. And on the corners. And edges. Now a lot of people struggle to actually identify where the airbrush is pointing and that lot of people includes me but don't worry so much when you're doing a pre-shading coat it doesn't have to be very accurate at all you don't have to worry too much about exactly where it's going it's just a rough rough smattering of colour And then what I like to do on the inside is actually do it quite more widespread on the inside because I like to make the inside a bit grubby because it's hard to get to. So I'll probably put a lot more on the inside of the piece. Uh, some of this may not be seen, but this part of the back will be visible. So I'm actually turn the paint up a little bit so we can do this quicker. I'm not going to worry so much about going around all the lines here. This is a more general dark coat for me. So just the way I like to do it. You could carefully go around all the panels if you wanted. Not a problem at all. Hope you can see all this. And that is... That is completed. So that's what we're aiming for. As you can see, it's just going around the, the, the edges, the corners, um, just to give some shadowing so that when you do put the paint on, that little shaded area will just be a bit of a shadow. Uh, on the back, like I say, I take to make, tend to make the inside of these panels darker just because they look more grubby and dirty then. Uh, I, I just, it's just a look I like. You don't have to do that. You could do exactly the same on the back as on the front if you wanted to go to all that detail. But I like to think, like I say, these bits get more wear and tear and more dirt and grime and they're harder to get to for engineers and maintenance crews. So 
that's what we're looking for, basically, on all the parts. So, let me go and do that, back in a moment. Okay, right, so that's all the pre-shading done. Here's some of the parts. Now, when you're watching that bit, you may have noticed that the uh, the pre-shading on this part, let's zoom in a little bit, hang on. Uh, took me about an hour. Uh, now, the keen-eyed amongst you who know your airbrushes may have noticed and may see on this that the pre-shading coat I did is kind of speckly. Um, at first I thought it was just something I was doing wrong, so I changed up my technique as I went along. Um, turns out it's not. It's my airbrush. Uh, the needle, which has a very, very fine point that will, if you stab yourself with it, go through to the bone. Um, the needle has a slight dink on the end. It's slightly bent on the end. Really tiny little dink. But it's given me, I'm assuming that's what's given me this splattery pattern. It's not as fine and crisp as it used to be. And that's really annoying because I'm skinned and I can't afford a new needle right now. So, buh. so what we're going to have to do for the painting stage now is switch up to my older, cheaper Naffa airbrush, uh, which is an old Spray Max, the side cup, which I'm not as keen on as a gravity-fed top cup. Uh, it's not as brilliant, but it'll do. I tried using the needle from this in the De uh, the Devilbis, but it uh, didn't work. So we're going to have to use this puppy. So hopefully this will work and we'll go all nearly swore then, uh, all to lob. Um, so all we're going to do, we're going to paint these pieces now. Uh, now these are all the white parts, so we're going to obviously use white paint. Um, what I intend to do is not just blap the paint on so you get a white piece. We're going to mist it on for a, a key coat, so a little coat of paint that can grip future coats to it. And then we're going to lightly build up the paint so these pre-shaded areas start to fade. Uh, and then just focus it a little bit on the middles of panels so it's got an even brighter bit. It's hard to do with white because it's basically white. Uh, you can't really have brighter white than white. So, And we'll have a bit on the inside but a little less because as I said before I want that to be dark. So we're going to use Tamiya XF2 flat white. White is the worst colour to paint with in the world uh, because it's a pain uh, and it doesn't like to go onto models and give a nice even coat. So. Oh, also those amongst you will have noticed as well that I totally forgot to, when I put the paint in thinner, or thinner than paint, into the airbrush last time, I also totally forgot to stir it the first time. Okay, right, so, forgot to put the paint in ready. So this is my rubbish spray craft airbrush. I'll just see if it works, because I've not used it for a while. Yeah, we seem to have some paint. I mean, the other airbrush would have been fine. It's just a bit speckly, and that might give me a rough texture, so I don't really want that. So what we're going to do first is put a light mist coat on here first. Uh, let's do that. Again, air first, then paint. See, I'm not getting too close. I'm not using the full flow of paint. I've not got the trigger pulled back all the way. Just a little bit. Just to give it this light mist coat. Hopefully you can see all this. And it is difficult because I'm painting white on white, which is always a winner. Let me zoom out a bit, and then you'll be able to see better. Right, let's try that, shall we? So, misting the paint. Again, not full blast. I've got the paint flow turned up higher this time than I did for the... Uh, for the appreciating coat. OK. 
Okay, so that's the inside, if you can see that. There's also a fly in here, which is about to get spray painted. Uh, okay, look, hello. Get off. Right, so I name him Dave. He's now Dave the model making fly. So we're going to go over this bit. We've done the little mist coat. We're going to go over it again, another mist coat, a bit more. I hope you can see this. It's all the wrong angles. And I don't want to get rid of the pre-shading altogether, just slowly make it fade away. Get around the edges. And now I'm going to do is focus on the centre parts. Not centre parks, centre parts. So I can build it up from the middle and then slowly fade it out to the outside area. You might see on this bit, hopefully. Uh, let's have a go, see if you can see it. Start in the middle. And just little circular motions, fade my way out. And do some more in here on the inside. It's kind of grey, so I'll do some slightly whiter areas. I know this bit won't be seen, but... that I think just do the edges if you can see that and that my friends I'll just turn this off so you can hear me oh hang on So that, my friends, is what we're looking for. Dark on the inside, white on the outside, and that's it. Um, I mean, I could do a little bit more white. If I think it's too dark, I can go and do some more white in the center. Like I said, the trick is, just to make sure you're starting with as little paint as possible. Increase the flow a bit more so you can actually go further uh, than you would for the pre-shade coat. Little bit of paint, just start little circles in the in the middle of the panel and just make them bigger and bigger and bigger. If you need to if you want to fade it out, you can both ease off on the paint, so pull the push the trigger forward a little bit so you have less paint, or you can just pull the airbrush further away and that will fade it out to the edges. And what you're left with is this nice, it probably looks a bit extreme on the camera, but um, I mean, it doesn't look as, that looks like a big white patch, but it's not that bad. What you get is this nice white part that fades to a darker, a lighter grey in the edges. And that's all we're after. So, now I've got 8 billion parts I need to go and spray. Okay, and we are done. All the white areas are now painted. As you can see, hopefully we've got this nice pre-shaded effect uh, with the little shadowy areas just showing through a little bit. See it more on the inner shield. Now the difficulty with these is that a lot of the areas that I've painted aren't even ever going to be seen. And you're never quite sure until you put it together, like especially on the shield here which parts are going to be visible, which parts covered up by other pieces. So, eh, it's, it doesn't matter. Um, it's the same mentality that makes me want to paint the inner frame, even though you're not going to see most of it. So these have all been done. Uh, all the uh, other parts have now been done. Uh, looking rather spanky. There's a few little pieces that I haven't painted yet. Uh, I don't know if you can see, you probably can't see down here. There's a little piece of the, the face. Uh, there's two little arm pieces. There's little bits to go on the, on the ankle guards. That's just because I've got them stuck down because they're so small I can't clip them. So they're stuck down. I'll Once I, these all go back in the tray, I'll prime and paint those. Uh, but that is just about it now, I think. 
I will go off and paint the rest of the coloured armour parts. Um, when we come back, I will be painting the inner frame. I'm not going to pre-shade the inner frame, but I'll be priming it and then spraying it. I'm thinking gunmetal, perhaps. Uh, possibly. We'll see. Um, get that done. Uh, after that, and after that, then it's decals. Um, and then I've got to plan the weathering. So I need to know whether I need to build it first and then weather it, or weather it off the. Actually, if I'm going to have the inner frame gunmetal, that needs to be shiny. So the exterior armor plating and so on needs to be matte. So I'll have to use different varnishes. So I'll have to paint and wet. I'll have to weather and varnish the armor off the model. This you see why this gets complicated. It's you, you have to do brain somersaults sometimes to figure out how you're going to do this. Um, if you're painting it all matte, so the interior frame was just grey and matte, then you could just build it and then spray matte varnish. But because I want some gloss parts or some shiny parts, uh, uh, I've not even touched the weapons yet. Uh, they'll be done afterwards. My focus for the moment is just building the actual Gundam himself. So that will do it for this time. Uh, catch us on the next one when we'll do more interesting things and we're still in the tedium phase by the way this is still the tedious bit so uh, thank you again for watching stay tuned for the next one follow me on Facebook and Twitter they're at the end of the video you know the addresses subscribe to the YouTube channel leave your comments all the other things you're supposed to say when you're providing um, stuff for people to consume yada 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 your home is at risk if you do not keep up repayments right I will see you soon Adios amigos.